tension and stress of the present day life are leading humans into a kind of psychological disarray. While man seems to be evolving socially, his state of mind gets into the improbable with each passing day. This reflects our mental being. As the form and type of diseases get more complicated, the scientific world is working overtime to find a cure to some of the unknown parameters of disease. This work on the improbable leads us to a single question. Is it that the line of treatment should be purely based on application of drugs or there is something more which can help? So, does faith really help? Uh, yes, once you are talking about uh, faith, I would say that the whole life depends upon faith. You see, the life starts itself with faith. So you believe in certain things that they are going to help you. The aura, the ambience, and the sky overviewing a small, serene hamlet. Sadhupura bespeaks a mystical story. There is a vital bridge that seems to be a unique connecting link between two extremes, between tangible and intangible, between old and new, between tradition and modernity. People from different walks of life step in to share and experience something unusual. Pulled in and communed with the ambience, they keep moving ahead and reach out to their messiah, the faith healer. The man with exotic powers from attractive environs spells a magic, a magic of faith healing. Flowing beard, indented face, sunken eyes, furrowed forehead. The visage of the faith healer depicts nuances of subtlety. A recourse to divine power to cure mental or physical disabilities. Moving his lips in a murmur, resting his hallowed hand over the patient's head. He immaculately sprinkles his healing mesmerism. He is the faith healer of contemporary afflictive times, when survival seems to depend on more than just having the right treatment. He is an intermediary whose intercession is all important in effecting the desired cure. He is a healer. He also has some spiritual and curing touch. I have absolute faith on him because we have always felt better after consulting him. He is a good healer and knows the cure of every ailment. First, we have full faith upon Providence and then on Kadir Rishi. I have inherited this healing prowess 
from my grandfather, who was actually guided by a mystic from Kabul. He practiced his healing powers for about 70 years. Later, my father also practiced the same for a pretty long time. Then the legacy was passed on to me. Leaving homeopathy aside, leaving uh, acupuncture and other methods which have been at least subjected to certain investigations that tests or uh, certain studies have been conducted, what is happening is that certain people who are not qualified in any way, neither in alternative medicine nor in, say, the modern uh, biological medicine, they sometimes uh, practice all sorts of, which is, which is simply quackery, uh, which is not only irrational, illogical, but it is criminal also. We are not discussing Kadirishi per se, but a person in whom there is a lot of faith and belief of common people. And what Kadirishi does is he is making use of his spiritual mechanism for helping people. And once you talk about the medicinal things that he's also practicing, is the faith of people. So people's faith works in two ways. One, they are believing in the person's spirituality. Two, they are believing in the power of the medicine as well. So what these people do in their heart of hearts, they are combining spirituality with medicine or the use of drug. And they are doing it. Therefore, we won't say that uh, this is uh, a kind of strategy he is making use of. We say that basically he is trying to help people spiritually through faith. There are certain cases which have been totally forsaken by the doctors as hopeless ones. But it is faith that leads them to me, and they believe that they will be cured. I took my daughter to various hospitals and a renowned neurologist, Dr. Sushil Razdan. He prescribed certain medicines which did not help. So I finally came here with full faith, and I hope she will be all right soon. Even when it's totally given up situation, the faith healer infuses a hope of recuperation. The holistic approach of treatment proves efficacious. His psychosomatic clairvoyance apparently brings solace and relief to a number of despondent sick who pin their last hopes on him. Upholding the significance of medical drugs, they subsequently reinforce the indispensability of the faith factor. Not medicine, dawa, all alone. They hanker for prayer, dua, evidently. They believe that prayer isn't a panacea that should supplant medications. Rather, both matter and work in consonance. Faith healing is surely an interplay of birth. Once you find that there is a person who goes for medicine, who also goes for faith, means he more or less finds himself most insecure person. And he finds that perhaps if faith does not help him, then medicine would. If medicine would not, then faith. So he tries in his heart of hearts to combine both these things. And with that hope, he goes to the uh, spiritual healer. And thereby, we find that, yes, sometimes both of these things do work and sometimes only one single thing would work. It would depend upon the mind of the client. The faith factor is an incantation which pulls in people to have a healing bliss. The faith 
that sees no sham, no reason, but simply communion of salvation. Salvation from all pain and suffering. The faith that leads the morbid people to believe that they are not alone because God is personally interested in them. And the assurance of which is strengthened by the sheer presence of the faith healer. This safeguards them against the psychological isolation that batters many people with serious diseases, since human beings are the only species who are conscious of their mortality and have an organic craving for the eternal. That is why man as a patient is a whole person and not simply a composite of symptoms and ailments forming just a case to be cured. The sacrosanct faith healer of masses cashes on this premise to promote this healing knack. Even as the modern methods of medical treatment are significant enough to be ignored, they are highly expensive for a commoner the one who has to pay through the nose. Consequently, the indigent try to look for alternatives that appear propitious to them. People are poor. They can't afford a lot of, uh, say, say, investigations or, uh, which are almost a sort of prerequisite for modern medicine as such, right? So, if this person is uh, living from hand to mouth or even under the poor, below poverty line. So naturally, you ask him to undergo certain investigations which will cost him few thousand rupees. So naturally, he will not go for that. He will look for some other alternative method. So in my opinion, Kashmiri society as a whole is a lower middle class group. So majority of people would belong to lower middle class groups. I can't make a rule, but then we have found that in other countries, economically very well off, even belonging to the upper, upper classes, most of the people who go to such priests and mystics are generally uh, upper, upper class people. We took our baby to hospital, but we were not satisfied. Many of our well-wishers insisted to get her here. We have heard that Kadirishi cures jaundice. I came here from Jammu to get cured for the same. I feel quite better now. God willing, both medicine and prayer will cure my patient. I have faith on both. Both medicine and prayer play their role. Since he possesses a spiritual touch, it will certainly work. I would say that these two kinds of strategies have always been available in the history of men. That there are things where you need spiritual healing, psychological treatment, and there are areas in our life in which testable, workable hypotheses can be tested, where medicine can be applied, Yes, both ways we are helped. Uh, we uh, have no right to disbelieve a psychological, a faith treatment method, as we have every right to believe in what is concrete, tangible, in the form of medicine. Today, faith cannot be undermined as something irrelevant to medical science. Various scientific studies have substantiated the healing potential of faith. A new understanding of the physiology involved in this regard is evolving gradually as people caught in the daily humdrum of life crave to live a stress-free, healthy life. <laughs>